my name is yemi welcome to my channel uh, in this video i'll be showing you how i edit from start to finish in affinity photo so let's get into it i have opened up the raw file and this is the raw file in this particular one this is the raw file opened in affinity photo this is the first page that you get to see the develop persona i am not sure if i want to do too much here other than just increase my contrast by two percent or maybe two is too much one is fine uh probably increase contrast again when i finish editing or during my edits i'm also going to increase my vibrance a little contrast to be one percent and vibrance i think it's on nine will be fine in fact you know what i think i'll just go with 15. maybe one percent for saturation i think i'll end up dealing with that later as for shadows and highlights i want to reduce the shadows i mean the highlights rather i think i want to reduce that so i'm going to make this about 10. i think 10 or 12 is fine 10 is fine and then my highlights i'll probably just take that down yeah completely okay this image looks funny but i'm going to try my best i think taking it down is fine let's make this say eight percent so because i'm editing on different screens or on the same screen but like extended I'm, and i'm looking at the bigger screen it's i have to keep constantly come back to the smaller screen to see if what i'm doing is looking reasonable because on the bigger screen the calibration is is it calibration is that the word it's different so the colors look slightly different maybe i'm going to increase my bright my exposure just a bit and maybe fix a, a good part of it in a way maybe i can try the brightness I don't mind it actually maybe about this is fine 15 percent is fine go ahead and develop with that i i don't know if i want to work with clarity or i want to free myself from the shackles clarity this way this is what you get obviously it's too much this way this is what you get it kind of reduces the work that you're going to do in your post so it's not bad if you take some of it out if you really care too much a lot about texture it was really close up i would care a lot about texture and you know make this a, a little more so that i have like more skin to work with but this reduces my workload so why not you don't have to and it's not a close-up picture so i don't see the point in having a lot of it so reducing it is fine for me works fine for me for this picture i'm going to go ahead and develop that now that that's developed, I am going to make a copy with Ctrl J. Now, okay, so now we have a copy. I'm going to turn this one off for a second and work on this. I'm going to grab this guy, my clone brush tool. That's what's called. Look at it. Clone brush tool. Uh, flow opacity, both to be at 100. I'm going to increase the size of the brush so I can work with the skin. Grabbing for... I'm going to make hmm let's try putting this on lighten and see what happens is it lighten or lighter lighten let me use lighten first okay so I'm going to grab uh, my alt key alt on this place for source and then put it here cover it Alt for source. 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 Source. Alt for source. Source. Alt for source. 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 Alt key. Cover it. Alt stamp. Cover it. Alt copy, Alt copy, cover it. So I continue to use the Alt and Stamp 
a method to with a clone brush to clear out any spots or pimples that were on the face so i switch between lighten and darken i would use lighten to when i'm moving a copy a good place to somewhere that is not so good but then it's too dark and i need it to be lighter so if i'm coming for copying from a dark place and i want it to be light where i want it to be i'll use the lighting but if i'm copying from a light place and i need the uh place i want to fix to be dark i will put it on darken otherwise i just use normal This is where we are coming from. This is where we are at. And it still looks very funny and weird, but we are going to try our best and make it work, okay? So now we have these two Im images. What we're going to do is merge. So if you, you can right click here and merge down. So you right click and merge down. So it combines the two of them together. And becomes one image again so now that we've merged down what we're going to do is create a couple with ctrl j i'm going to turn that one off and on this one it's going to grab my frequency separation click on frequency separation set this to about seven seven is fine apply i'm going to, and I'm going to turn this one off focus on this one we go with our low frequency first and i'm going to grab this brush paint mixer brush i'm going to set this to seven this to be on 100 I'm going to increase the size of my brush sometimes click in and out of the image for it i click on this auto clean and so you're sure that the brush is the way you need it to be and then you start mixing these colors basically so mixing colors in their different regions so just lightly brushing mixing up the colors what this does is mix up the colors together in one area I'm going to be doing this for the different areas of the image just mixing mixing Mixing. Make sure you don't cross <laughs> over. Just mix the areas that you know look like they have similar colors. When you're mixing uh, colors here, yeah, be careful to not cross over from shadows to um mid tones to the highlights make sure you mix highlights together mid tones together and shadows together so adjust your brush accordingly so that you don't mix shadows and highlights together now i'm going to go ahead and grab my clone brush tool again and just deal with any extra thing that needs to be dealt with I already did half of the work earlier by ensuring that I took care of the of the spots and big pimples with the clone stamp brush. So now I'm just taking care of the large pores or other little details that need to be taken care of before we can proceed and complete the frequency separation process. So grab these two. And Ctrl G to group it so you can now see Where we're coming from where we are at now where we're coming from where we are at now i'm going to do some dodging and burning next so to do that i'm going to grab my curves adjustment layer to take this all the way up and then another one just slightly down really slightly down Okay, so this will be burn and this will be dodge. I'm going to create a mask. 
same thing with this one create a mask control i for the mask same thing here now i'm going to grab our white brush regular brush tool paint brush tool flow at two percent hardness at zero opacity at 100 going to zoom in turn off the frequency separation you can just label it that so that turn that off and that way you can see where light and darkness is but then you can also create a black and white layer so that it just helps you see let me adjust it a tad bit kind of to see where the black and white is so if i go on my start with my dodge layer go into the mask grab my brush tool and i'm just going to paint everywhere that is bright make it brighter i think i'll use three percent because i'm doing a light skin person so let's get into it eyes for example will be brighter okay you can see that there's light here i'm going to make that brighter see that there's light on the cheeks increase the size of the brush And see that there's some light here and to make it brighter uh, there should be some light here based on makeup so I'm going to make that place bright as well some light on the forehead a lot of it is around this area so there's a bit of light here I'm going to give us some light here give us some light here as well more light here I'm going to add some light to the teeth now let's go to a burn for burn I'm going to darken this side and here as well you can see before after before after creates okay, the silhouette that we need there switch quickly to dodge and just create like brightness here okay so let's see great now switch keep on dodge add some light to the neck this is brighter i know the hair is creating some shadow here so you don't have to go all the way and then for the burn now for this one i know that there is a bit of shadow here so i'm just going to create that almost like you're creating like contour so i'm just going to do that for, do it for just this side and then also do it for the little shadows that we have around the cheeks that just accentuate the cheeks so i'm going to put the shadows there that were there initially great. okay great um there would be some shadows at the edge of the head well not a lot just a little then the jawline as well I'm going to create some shadow in there around the jawline just based on where that shadow was falling all right and then right underneath you see this little part of the nose that kind of look like the top of the mouth so i'm going to accentuate the shadow that i have there too so it looks like there is an actual is a cupid's bow yeah i'm going to create it there as well create the fake cupid's bow I'm going to go to my dodge slightly and create some light in there in the middle so you see it it's not obvious but trust me i take that it's there see in here there was like eyeshadow so i'm gonna create that as well great now you can turn off your dodge and see where it's active 
now I can turn off this layer so you can see what we have done so far this is where then you can turn this one off so you see so I feel like I need to do something here so I'm going to go ahead and add some dodge in here so I'm going to increase this on my brush and then if you come back here there's a bit of a little work to do in the mix in here so i'm just going to quickly go in there and mix a little more anyway I can delete this one now let's do a quick eye whitening i just grabbed the black and white adjustment layer i control i to invert i grab my brush set use the setting that i have above and whiten the teeth and the eyes with the brush just paint over the teeth and the eyes and that's pretty much it i mean you can use the extensive process but this is like a straightforward easy process to do when you don't have that much time Next up with color adjustment, I will I say color grading. So what I'm doing here is just adding some uh, blue to the shadows and adding some uh, yellow to the mid-tones and the highlights. So with this uh, selective color, what I did was make some of my red. The picture looked a bit red to me, so I made some part of the red dar a slightly darker and then increased the yellows for the red and then for my shadows in my color balance i added some blue to that to make my shadows blue if that makes sense bluish and then added some red as well and to my highlights in color balance i added some yellow and some red you can slow down this part just to see like the little two changes that i made they're not really a lot but you will see a difference in the full picture I also grabbed everything and then you know did like before and after for you to see what it looks like and when you're done with this part you can take all everything you've done and group everything by merging visible this is slightly different from merging down because here you don't get you get to see all the layers that you still made adjustment to so after selecting all the layers and merging visible I decided to do some cleanup just a little clean up for the stray hairs that were on the chest with the ink painting brush tool so this tool takes is like the healing brush tool but here you don't have to like sample for like a good part or anything the thing just i'm guessing it just is i think it uses like content aware to figure out what to do so i just paint over the hairs that are flying around and it takes care of them so i also do this for maybe like strings that are loose on a cloth uh little links and stuff like that so i use this to take care of it so next up is levels adjustment so this one i'm still figuring it out but all i did was adjust the white and the black levels so basically increasing the light in the picture and uh increasing the, the shadow to just by like one percent so the black level I made that one one percent and then i adjusted the white level a lot and this particular adjustment i'm only going to apply it to the skin and the hair so i was going to i created a mask so that i could invert with ctrl i i grabbed my brush with the settings above and i painted over the skin and the hair to make just those parts a little lighter and that's it's it, it's one setting i'm still not completely sure of i just wanted to try it out to see what difference it will make and this pretty much what it looks like before and after so after doing the levels adjustments next thing is to check to see what the changes have made look like from start to finish or to the point where we're at and this is before and after before and after you can see the skin is so much brighter and it looks very bright i might still like take down the levels adjustments i'm not so sure yet but i decided to clean some of it from the hair because i felt it was 
I kind of went a little beyond the hairline so I was just trying to take care of that part at least move it from the background because I didn't want the light I don't want the background to be lighter than it already is because that was the background that I used that's pretty much it for this video these are the, this is how I edit mostly apart from that levels adjustment too but this is how I edit in affinity photo if you like to see any other video you can check out my other videos and you can also request for other editing videos so next time enjoy the rest of your time on youtube bye for now